In this video, we're going to take a look at definite integrals. So we start here with a definition from OpenStax that we've got a function that's defined on an interval. So we're not looking at our function as a whole. We're looking at it from one number on the x-axis to another number. And when we're talking about this interval, a is always going to be less than b when we're writing this interval, just like any time in interval notation. Um, so this is looking at our function for a piece of its domain. And then the definite integral from a to b is given by, so we have this integral symbol, so it's a long elongated s, and that is, you know, kind of a shorthand notation for a summation. And on that integral, Next to it, we've got the, the a to b. So again, we've got our integral represented there as well of our function f of x dx. And what this is equal to is the limit of, as n goes to infinity, of a sum starting at 1 going to n. So we're making n bigger and bigger and bigger. And this sum is our any of our various Riemann sums that we have. So this little asterisk there on our xi, that's saying that that's some height in our rectangle. So what we're going to do is make more and more rectangles. And as we do that, when our rectangles get smaller and smaller in width, so as that delta x gets smaller and smaller, and we get more rectangles, that approximation to our area gets closer and closer to our actual area. So provided this limit exists, this is what's called the definite integral. And if this limit exists, then f is called an integrable function. So, you know, integral, integrable just basically means that we can find the integral. And integrals are a lot more forgiving than derivatives were. Um, and that's shown here in theorem 1.1 that talks about that if you have a continuous function, then it's integrable. So some issues that we had with derivatives, right? Like we had issues when we had like pointy parts of our derivative or our function like here, that derivative wouldn't exist, but that function's continuous everywhere. It's all connected. I was able to draw it without lifting my pencil up. But it's not, we don't have a derivative at that point where we have that pointy part. Now, that pointy part with an integral is not a problem at all. All we need is it for it to be continuous. So it's a little bit of a difference um, with derivatives versus integrals. With derivatives, we need our functions to be continuous and we need it to be smooth. Um, not so with definite integrals. We just need to be all connected. It could have all sorts of pointy parts. So this is gonna make, you know, absolute values have integrals um, and these ones where we have these nodes or cusps. So we've also now seen basically two types of integrals. We've seen an indefinite integral and a definite integral. So the difference between these two is that a definite integral, so this is that integral symbol f of x dx. So notice the difference kind of up above here. We've got this a and this b here. We don't have that here with a definite integral. This is for, this is the integral of the whole function. And our solution here is a family of functions. Right, we don't get that exact answer. We get, you know, it's this function, but it possibly could have a constant add to it, added to it. So for example, if we have the integral of x, its integral is 1 half x squared plus c. So it's 1 half x squared, that's the shape of this graph, but it could be moved up or down on the y-axis, we're not totally sure. So definite integral, we're taking the integral of our entire function. This is our undoing the derivative, and we're going to find that with the definite integral. We're still going to be doing that, some of that undoing the derivative part, but there's um, a little bit extra that's going to be happening here. So here, this is our integral from a to b dx. So this is just on an interval, so not our entire function. And one interpretation of the definite integral 
is that it is the area under the curve from x equals a to x equals b. So for example, if we were looking at our function y equals x, if we were looking at up above, and let's say we had a was right here, b was right here, our definite integral would be this area, and our solution is a number. So that's really kind of the big differences between the two types of integral. An indefinite integral is going to give you a function or a family of functions as your solution. A definite integral, it's going to be a number. And one of our interpretations is the area under that curve. So for a quick example here, let's find this following integral given the graph below here. So we want the integral from 0 to 5. So it's not the whole domain of our function, we're just looking from x being 0 to x being 5. So this part of the x-axis that we've highlighted. So what we want to find is the area, I'm going to draw this and then erase it, the area created by this shape right here. And there's a couple of ways that we can do this, but what I notice about it is that it's a couple of different shapes put together. So I'm going to break this up into some different shapes. So we've got like a rectangle here in the middle. There's a triangle over here. And we do have a trapezoid over here. But if we want, we can even cut this up into two different shapes, a small triangle and a small rectangle. So basically, we've got four areas that we just need to find each of those areas and add them up. So we'll go with colors here. So first, we've got the orange area. And that's going to be a rectangle with a length of 1 and a width of 2. And then we've got the green triangle there. And the area of a triangle is 1 half our base times our height. The base is 2. And the height is also 2. Yeah, that's 2 units there and 2 units there. Uh, let's see, red was our third little rectangle here, and its width is one unit, and then its height is three. And then lastly, we've got our little rectangle right here, or triangle right there. So one half, our, again, our base is two, and our height is three. So each of these areas, we'll find each of them. And then our total area, that's what our integral is equal to. And it's going to be these smaller areas all added up. And we get 10.